Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 g'day, curd nerds, and welcome to Ask the Cheese Man. This is episode... What is it? Uh, 232. Oh, they're flying by now, aren't they? Uh, lovely to see so many people in the chat. Um, let's say g'day to a few people before we thank all the financial members. So, uh, first cab off the rank tonight was Monique. Hello, Monique. How are you? Um, Habib. Hello, Habib. All the way there in Lebanon. Uh, all was was right. G'day, how are you? Um, and there's a comment. Where is it? Where did it go? Uh, all was right says, hey, I saw you were on Cameo. You should play that up. Um, yeah, I'm a kind of a modest guy. I think if uh, people want to pay for a greeting or what have you, then um, they can do that if they want. Um, the link is in all the descriptions of all the videos, so I'm sure they would stumble across it eventually. But uh, yeah, thanks for um, thanks for noticing. It's lovely. Um, Cheryl, hello, Cheryl. How are you? Uh, Shauna, hello, Shauna. Lovely to see you as always. Ted, g'day. Ted from Melbourne, my hometown. Uh, I wasn't born here. Just I just live here. Uh, Gareth, hello, Gareth. How are you? H7 Apollo and Emily. Hello, Emily. Uh, TA. G'day, TA. And Michael in Adelaide. Hello, Michael. How are you? And Jenny, hopefully. she's there. Oh, Jenny says hi. Hello. Oh, lovely to see everybody. Um, now, there is... What I'm looking for. Um, thank yous. Yes, of course. We always say thank you on this show. So thank you to all the YouTube members. Um, we got some new ones, uh, so we've got quite a few there now, uh, which is fantastic. So all of those people donate uh, on a monthly basis, um, as little as I think two dollars, all the way up to ten, I think at the moment. But there are higher tiers for that, and you get various levels of of membership. Anyway, so that's all the YouTube members. Thank you so much to everybody there, and a special thank you to all my patrons. Uh, and especially Robin Wickens, who signed up this week. Thank you, Robin. Appreciate it. And thanks to all of the financial members, present and past. Now, before I get much further, I suppose I better uh, announce who I am. I'm Gavin Weber, and I'm the host of the show and Chief Curd Nerd. And I will be attempting to answer your home cheese making questions. Uh, also, at uh, 30 minutes past the hour, we will also be having uh, a gallery, and there's quite a few photos in the gallery for today's show, so that's great. Thank you to uh, Joy and Habib for sending those in. Um, also, randomly throughout the uh, throughout the episode, there will be uh, some cheesy, sorry, yeah, cheesy dad jokes, no, dad jokes that are cheese related, that's better. Yeah, so we'll have some of those as well. So that should be good fun. Um, uh, anybody, uh, Nigel, hello, Nigel. Lovely to see you um, in the chat. Now, there are some questions. Do have one or two. Where is it? First one off. Uh, Ted says, I have a cheddar developing a rind right now before waxing this weekend. Yeah, just be careful, Ted, if it's not humid where you are. Um, where did you say you were from? From Melbourne, of course. It's humid at the moment. But yeah, uh, air drying your cheese, just make sure it doesn't start to crack. Uh, the cheddar does that sometimes. You don't really need a rind, it just has to be touch dry before you wax or vacuum pack it. Uh, you don't need the rind to dry out completely. Uh, otherwise, yeah, like I said, it'll start to crack and then in those cracks grow molds and yeasts and that's no good for anybody. Um, uh, Monique says that I'm struggling to decide. I'll start again. I'm struggling to decide between making a bel paese or kafili for Christmas. Mm, decisions. Uh, why don't you make both? 
both will be ready before Christmas. Uh, Kefili will be, well, ready in three weeks, but, you know, you can mature it up to uh, three months. I wouldn't go much past that because it's quite a moist cheese. Um, very salty, but moist. It's the salt that actually helps preserve it. Um, be because of the high moisture content, it does tend to grow mold, as we know. In fact, I've got one in the cheese cave right now um that i will be doing a video for this weekend i hope i'll get it all finished uh, i've got the footage on the timeline of my editing software and started to to tweak that um and i actually rubbed the kefili with smoky paprika and olive oil and um yeah it's looking pretty good uh and it actually has kept a lot of the mold that normally develops on kefili uh, during the three weeks of ripening in the cheese fridge there, I haven't seen any it does smell a little funky but kefilis always smell a bit funky um, but yeah there's no white and blue molds that normally grow on the outside of those cheese so there you go but yeah great question uh, Monique oh I showed it again <laughs> what am I doing take that uh, uh, H7 Apollo says oh, I guess I'll count that as a greeting it is hello sorry I don't know what I said there um anyway nigel says um any advice of vac packing cheese vacuum sealer pros and cons yeah sure so um which one you get is up to you uh do not buy those meat aging bags with your vacuum sealer it should be the proper vacuum sealer bags the eight meat aging ones allow the it to breathe and you'll lose a lot of moisture um, and it can breathe both ways and you may even get mold growth on the cheese so don't use those just use the popper vacuum sealer bags um, pros and cons there's only certain kinds of cheese that you can vacuum pack so you can vacuum pack uh, hard Italian cheeses uh, after a bit of uh, a month or two of initial rind development uh, you can also uh, you can also backpack cheddar style cheeses and Dutch style cheeses. Um, I wouldn't vacuum pack Havarti; it's too soft, um, and that tends to flatten a lot within the bag, and you get a lot of moisture loss loss as well. Um, so, yeah, don't, whatever you do though, don't vacuum pack mold ripened cheeses whether that be uh, white mold uh, blue mold and uh, washed rind cheeses with uh, brevi bacterial linens don't vacuum pack any of those cheeses because they need oxygen to grow and develop the molds and you will stifle those uh, somebody actually asked me the other day um, should can i vacuum pack white mold cheese after it's ripe and i said no because the mold will die off and it will taste rancid um that's why all of uh the white mold cheeses that you see in the supermarket all and ones you buy from artisan cheese makers are wrapped in micro perforated paper that helps them breathe they're a living thing you can't put those mold ripened cheeses in a vacuum bag that includes farmhouse cheddar I wouldn't I, I saw somebody the other day sent me an email or something sent me I can't remember it could be joy I'm not sure it could be in the uh, in the uh, gallery so somebody put a farmhouse cheddar blue into a ripening bag and I don't recommend that the one I did I just let it ripen naturally in the ripening box uh, with a damp cloth at the bottom underneath the mat and that stayed fine and didn't get too much blue mold growth, bit top and bottom, uh, and it looked fantastic inside. So, okay. Um, right, so, uh, uh, where the heck are we? Uh, Ted says, thanks, Gav, I'll keep an eye on it. Yeah, make sure, yeah, you don't, like I said, the last thing you want, um, Ted, is uh, the cheese to crack, so. Um, Katarina says, G'day. G'day, Katarina. Lovely to see you. Colin says, um, 
Hi Gavin, Leodama. What is the reason for adding the small amount of skimmed milk, Colin? Um, yeah, it's to bring the um, the milk fat down, Colin. Uh, that's the reason to add it in. Um, yeah, that that's the reason. Bring the milk fat down to an acceptable level. You don't want it to. Leodama is not made with skim milk. It's not made with full cream milk. It's it's about three point two percent. 3.2% fat in the milk. So, um, uh, Ted says, for something like cheddar, is it okay to cut into smaller pieces to vac seal, or is it better to keep as a single piece? Okay, so when you ripen your cheese, it should always be intact. That's It forms a rind. The rind protects the inside of the cheese um, from seepage and all that sort of stuff, keeps the moisture intact, keeps the flavor intact. Uh, and when the uh, starter cultures die off, and that's what they're supposed to do, uh, when they run out of lactose to convert into lactic acid, the cell walls of the lact of the that of the uh, lactic bacteria break down into enzymes, and those en enzymes break down the fats and the proteins. Now, when you cut open the rind, you're exposing those to more oxygen in the initial when you first cut it open um, and there's no rind to hold it in so if you you know mature your cheese for a minimal amount of cheddars I would not open any um, any earlier than four months because they tend to have a bitter flavor within those first few months as the proteins are breaking down as they break down, they turn into peptides and they cause bitterness in the cheese in the early development of a cheddar. Uh, that's why up until about four months, that's when the peptides start to dissipate in the cheese and they break down further uh, into smaller amino acids uh, within the, the cheese, which give you all the funky, great flavors we love for cheese. So keep your cheese intact until at least then. As soon as you cut it open, um, a couple of things are going to happen. Then they're going to um, they're going to stop ripening as as it normally does. Uh, now, when I have when so when I fully mature my cheese, so I'll mature a, a cheddar for at least six months before I cut mine open, um, and then I'll I will cut it into pieces and then vac pack them. Uh, after it's mature and then I can store them in the cheese fridge they do start to have a little bit of moisture loss uh, into the bag and you'll see a little bit of moisture in the bag the vacuum pack bag as it ages longer but that's expected because you've broken the rind all right so that's that's my advice Ted I uh, hope that helps so cut cut it into so sh long story short cut it after it's matured and then cut it into pieces for storage there you go Okay, uh, Habib says, um, I agree about the smoky paprika rub, Sir Gavin. I notice no or very few mold growth on my olive oil paprika rubbed howder. I think the pepper inhibits most of the molds and yeasts. Yeah, I must admit, that's, that's my experience as well, Habib. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool. Um, I'm glad I put it on there. You can smell it still. You can still smell the smoky paprika. Not as much as I would have hoped. Um, on um, Saturday or Sunday, depends on what I'm doing this weekend, I'll be cleaning that off. So I'll be clean. It's quite a thick layer of um, smoky paprika with the oil. So it's like a paste all the way over. I'm not going to eat it like that. I'm going to rub the, the 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 remnant smoky paprika off and clean up the rind. Not too much that it's going to lose its colour, but it's going to look a nice dark red. Uh, when I eat the kefili and I'll do the taste test this weekend and then re re uh, release the video. I may may even film it on Friday. We'll see how we go. Anyway, but yeah, it does inhibit mold growth, which is great. Um, I put a little bit of oil on it and some more smoky paprika. I've done that twice weekly now, Wednesdays and Sundays. I've got it in my calendar to do that. Uh, and it's now mature. Well, it matured today, so um, it'll be a week and a little bit. Anyway. Great observation, Habib. Thank you. Uh, Shauna says, um, given the wonderful weather, wet weather predicted for the next few days, any cheese I should avoid 
trying to make tomorrow. I was thinking of a Toscano. Um, any hard Italian cheese or semi-hard Italian cheese will be fine, Shauna. Um, I would avoid white mold cheeses when the weather's a bit like this because the curds would probably not dry out. Depends on how humid it is in your kitchen, of course. Um, because uh, Chauna's in Tasmania, Victorian Tasmania are expecting 100 mils of rain, a bit like Sydney had a couple of weeks ago. So we're expecting a lot of rain very, very soon. Uh, it has rained a little bit here today, probably about 20 mils, but not too much. Um, so yeah, so if it's too humid, then the, um, the white mold cheeses don't dry out as much. Uh, and they take a lot longer in their molds as you're flipping them still. Hard Italian cheese, Toscano will be fine. So I don't think there'll be any problem with that. Um, uh, Colin says, oh, my order was in the post today. Many thanks. No problems at all, Colin. Happy to um, send stuff out from uh, Little Green Workshops. And if you're wondering where you can get stuff, like Colin just did, you can get cheese making supplies from littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Oh, slip of the tongue. Don't go. Yeah, that's silly. Um, Nigel says, thank you, Gavin, for the insight and g'day from the UK. Thank you, Nigel. Appreciate it. And... Uh, yeah, hopefully that answered your backpacking question. All right, um, next question's all the way from Norway. Uh, it's Claire, who goes under the handle of Ekosi Ekosi, which means Scotland in <laughs> Norwegian, I think. Um, or oh, is it French? It's French, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, you're, I'm pretty sure you're in Norway. Chime in, thank you, somewhere in there. Uh, Claire says, I was using some Floridanica yesterday. I realized the volume of the large grain culture like Floridanica is less amount in the teaspoon measure than fine powder culture. Uh, do I need to add a tad more? Uh, no. So what I do, Claire, and it's on the instructions that I send out for the cultures, is crush, uh, crush the packet. So crush all those big grains, they turn into powder then. It's just the way they're made. Um, so yeah, so just crush the big grains of um, Floridanica. Uh, you'll find that with um, a lot of the cultures from CHR Hansen, who Floridanica is made by, um, you need to crush the packet before you use it uh, because they come in these big bubbly grain things and you can't get an accurate measurement on the teaspoon if you're just using teaspoons like like i do in my, all my videos so that's what you do you crush up little bubbles and uh, then you get a better idea of how much you need mm. there you go um uh shauna says thank no problems at all <laughs> no problems uh oh Ah, crush it. We are teenagers again. Yes, good on you. It's like a Ninja Turtle thing. Cowbunga dudes. Um, and uh, yeah, you're, you're yes, you are in Norway. Um, uh, and Akossi is French. Now, I actually do ship to Norway because they're not in the EU. Um, I have a lot of issues uh, shipping stuff to the EU because of their tax laws. Um, and because I'm only, a, you know, we're a three-person company um, here that um, uh, we, we can't, we haven't got the manpower to collect taxes on the behalf of the EU. And recently I looked at signing up um, to ship stuff to the UK. And I tell you what, the paperwork is just so crazy. Um just to sign up to ship stuff to the UK. It's just phenomenal. There's like 10 forms I have to fill in before I can send any, well, before I'm allowed to ship. And then I have to collect tax on behalf of the Her Majesty's Customs. Oh, it's just, it's just crazy. So yeah, unfortunately I don't ship to the EU or, um, or to the UK uh, because of these archaic, sales tax laws so yeah crazy um most other places don't have those issues so I, I do ship to a lot of those places no problems at all okay um uh, habib says dear gavin i had a small 
Mildew problem in my cave when the humidity was more than 95% accidentally. Um, but although taken care of with vinegar and salt, um, a bad taste close to the rind seems to be permanent. Oh, that's not so good. Um, maybe what I would do, Habib, uh, in the cheese cave, and I think I've seen some pictures of it, uh, what I would do is just do a weak bleach solution. So just normal kitchen bleach. Um, so 20 millilitres to two litres of water. Uh, and then use a damp cloth and some gloves, of course, and just wipe the insides of your cheese fridge with that. That will dissipate the chlorine smell dissipate, or the ammonia smell, sorry, it's not chlorine. The ammonia smell dissipates and um, you shouldn't get that taste or smell in there. If you really want to wipe it down again with water, then you can, but yeah, that sounds a bit weird. The acetic acid in the vinegar um, will leave a, a re residual smell. Um, for anybody that's opened a packet of salt and vinegar chips, you'll know what I mean. But um, yeah, I don't think that'd have anything to do with the taste of the rind, but look, who am I? Because there's not a lot of airflow in cheese caves that we have, um, then yeah, that could be the issue, mate. So sorry to hear uh, that is happening. Um, Claire says, I have had you send stuff before. Yes, yes, I did send it to Norway. Uh, always reliable, thanks Claire. Um, Jessamine, hello Jessamine, lovely to see you. Says, hi Gavin, I've never made cheese before, too intimidated, but I've been watching for years and love your content. Thank you. Thank you, Jessamine, I appreciate it. Um, don't be intimidated by cheese making. Even the simplest of cheeses, um, well, simplest, <laughs> the freshest of cheeses are simple to make, so you should give it a go. Even just if you start off with soft cheese, you know, things like, um, Creme fraiche is just beautiful for desserts and cooking and all that sort of stuff. Or, or um, uh, halloumi is, is just magical. It's a fantastic cheese. Um, paneer, if you haven't even in, tried, try paneer as well. It's absolutely delightful. Um, with a little bit of salt, but it goes in so many meals. It's just lovely. Um, yeah, so that's, that's that. Don't be intimidated by cheese, but thank you so much. Um, now, I'm. what time is it? It's 23 past. We've got five minutes. I've got a surprise for those who um, love surprises, as always. I love giving things, um, and so many, so many people give to me. So I am going to drop some free memberships in the chat in a second. So just remember that to accept the free membership, you have to... It'll, you'll get a little pop-up, depends on how quick you are. Uh, there's a little pop-up in your chat that'll say, uh, turn on gift receiving or something like that. So watch out, here it comes. Um, I don't know, it'll take a little while. Anyway, so there we go. Um, there are some gift memberships in the chat now. If you don't have a membership, you can pick it up there for free. Um, so Evan Fitz got one, Robert Delucci got one, Patty Keller got one, Cheese Needs, Tracy snuck in there, must be really late or early in the morning there, and David Davey, thank you so much for grabbing those, um, and I hope you enjoyed uh, the free gift, of course, and the little star came up a few times, I don't know if there was any names, is there sound with that? Yeah, there's sound with that, that's lovely. Okay, um... So, uh, Jessamine says, uh, paneer is really delightful. Indeed it is. So, like I said, it's so easy to make. You just boil the milk, uh, put some lemon juice. Uh, I even put a little bit of yogurt in with it as well to add with a bit of flavour. Uh, the recipe's there on the channel, so go and check out paneer. It's an older video, but it's very, very simple to make. So, uh, you could do that, Jessamine. Um, Judy says, uh, my 4MO. Judy, are you there? I'm <laughs> not so... Uh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, is there a rest of a message there, something that I'm missing? Um, please continue. That would be lovely. Um, cool Cat says, Hello, Gavin. Hello, folks from... Is it GB, Great Britain? Is that it? I hope so. Um, and g'day to everybody. Uh, Judy's... Right, here we go. Judy's got a better message. Right. 
My fault. Four. Stop. Right, hang on. Late at night. There we go. Uh, my five month old cheese that shall not be named has gas in the vac pack. Late blowing. Um, what to do now? Um, yes, Vol the Vol Lord Voldemort cheese who <laughs> cannot be named. Yeah, I know that one. That's a classic. Um, yeah, a bit of gas. Mmm. Late blowing, probably, I would say. Um, so what to do? It Look, it's not... It'll just be cosmetic. There'll be fishes in the cheese. Um, so I'd take it out of the backpack bag um, and I would... Uh, clean it off if it needs to be cleaned off. There shouldn't be any moisture in the bag. They feel that's a fairly dry cheese, and then um, and repack it again. Uh, the extra pressure will should close up all the fissures, so you shouldn't have too many problems. Um, that's what I'd do. That's what I'd do. Um, uh, Chris says, "What's your email address?" Um, yes. So I will show you the email address. Keep watching, Chris. Uh, because at the end of the uh, the end of the gallery, which is coming up in three minutes' time, I show everybody where to send me photos, and you'll see the email address. If you don't want to hang around, then if you go to the About tab of the channel page, so go look for Gavin Weber, the channel. You're on the channel, but um, you go to the the channel page and go to the About tab, and there's for business inquiries and that's the email address where it is there you go um uh emily says uh what cheeses would benefit from a second person helping with it i'm trying to plan a romantic night oh okay oh i've got a perfect cheese marbled cheddar um so when you make marble cheddar, Emily, if you haven't seen the video already, go and check it out. It's uh, it's just called marble cheddar. Um, you actually get, you make two pots of curd. So one without a natto and one with a natto. And I was stirring with two hands, uh, trying not to mix them up, but stir, stirring up. So you'll have two pots on the stove, basically, with five litres of milk in each. And I've adjusted the recipe for both of those batches. And at the end, um, you cheddar each one separately. And then at the end, when you salt the cheese, you mix the fingers of the cheddar together and then press it. And it turns in this beautiful, abstract, two-color cheese, which is fantastic. So that would certainly benefit from two people stirring the curds uh, after you've cut them. So... Yeah, that'd be perfect. So try that. So the marbled cheddar is a perfect cheese for two people to be helping together. Two people to be working together. So that would be quite romantic if you're planning on making cheese uh, with a loved one. Uh, Chris says, no worries. Just wasn't sure if I sent it to the right one. Uh, not sure what you sent me, but I will have a look, Chris. Um... Cool Cat says, uh, I once had a T-bone steak with blue cheese grilled on top and a creamy sauce served with it. No question, just bragging. <laughs> oh, you're funny character there, Cool Cat. Um, yes, the blue cheese on a steak is, blue cheese sauce is delicious. It starts off with a little bit of roux and then some blue cheese melted into it. And that makes a nice blue, chores, a blue cheese sauce without splitting. Uh, and that's the last thing you want is grainy bits of cheese in your blue cheese sauce. So anyway, uh, it's time for the gallery, uh, Curd Nerds. And uh, let me just set this up, see if I can get it right. Um, ba -ba -ba. Let's just set it all up. Rightio. Um, oh, that's not quite right. There we go. One gallery. Right, uh, the first picture sent in today was from Habib. Uh, and he's in the chat. Uh, and what have we got? So it says, Habib says, Dear Gavin, after your last episode and because you suggested that maybe seeded cheeses could rot from inside because of the possibility of the seeds going bad after more than four months, I decided to open my seven 
months old caraway and fennel seeds howder and my nine month old cumin um, howder which is better known as a Kamina cast. Um, oh boy, the smell and the taste. Both had similar texture and both had the internal seeds intact with no signs of disintegration or change in smell. The Howder Cumin was just divine and extra age gave the cheese a great taste and complexity. Uh, I note that I followed your instructions to boil the seeds for 10 minutes and strain them before infusing with the curds. Best regards and cheese from Habib. So let's have a look. So this one's the caraway seed and fennel uh, howder, which was made. When did you make it? Um, I think that says 15th of the 3rd, 2022. And if I just open it now, so. Uh, how, how, sorry, what was the weight? Uh, 1.9 kilos. And you can see a little bit of the seeds on the outside. Not so much top and bottom, but on the inside, that looks amazing. That's the cumin seed one. Um, but yeah, right, it, it does taste amazing. It's an amazing tasting cheese. Um, so yeah, a little bit uh, crumbly, which is perfect because the acid development would have been a little bit higher than a normal howder, so that's fine. But um, what's the other one? Oh, this is the the cumin on the outside, right? So there was a bit top and bottom. I didn't get a picture of the the um, caraway and fennel seeds, so do I? Let's have a, no, that's the next person. So thanks for sending those in, Habib. Really appreciate it, um, and I'm glad it all turned out. So maybe because you did boil those seeds like I recommended then you maybe could have uh, aged them a little bit longer so you could probably backpack half pop it back in the cheese fridge like you normally do and it'll age but hopefully won't weep a little bit and I noticed in the in the bag and it, it, it happens to me too you can see just on the edge see around the edge here a little bit of moisture in the bag that's normal um, curd nerds it's not a it's not a big deal um, you just wipe that away. It doesn't make the cheese go rancid or anything like that. It's just a little bit of seepage because you've got to remember that the atmospheric pressure is different on the inside of the bag than it is on the outside. So it's actually squeezing a little bit of the moisture out on some cheeses. The softer ones like Howder, it will happen to. So anyway, that's uh, that's just a little point to note. Um, the next lot of photos is from... Uh, Jan, not Joy. I said Joy before. I don't know why. Uh, Jan. So uh, Jan's got some uh, information here. And now that the, the um, photos were not numbered, they weren't in any order. They were all called the same file name. So I just put one, two, three, four, five up to eleven uh, on them, and hopefully they're in some sort of order. So we'll see how this goes. Um, says, hi Gavin, progressing along my cheese making journey this week, I made a mini Edom uh, using half quantity of your recipe and a new 650 gram mold. Uh, I enjoyed the process, but discovered when it came to press my cheese was, oh hang on, when it came to Oreo G, my press was not tall enough for the mold, so I removed the spring for the first pressing but was able to add the spring back for the second pressing, although was it a bit of, a bit of a struggle to keep the top of the mold straight. So it was a little wonky, a little wonky Edom was born. I'm sure it won't affect the taste. Right, so let's have a look at this wonky Edom. I can't quite see, is that sideways, upside down? Hang on, let me just flip that around until it looks right. Does that look right? That looks better. Yeah, that's obviously after the first pressing. And, right, and then you got the spring in there after the second pressing. I see. Uh, and there it is. It's round-ish in the brine. That looks perfect. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I, don't think I don't think there'll be an issue, Jan. So, um, the next photo, and then you've got... No, you just these just uh, are cheeses that are in your cheese fridge. I don't. There's no comment about this at all. 
Anyway, we'll move along to the next one. Uh, right, so sage, the next cheese I made was Sage Derby. Uh, I watched your taste test and decided to add baby spinach to the mix and use dried sage as I was not sure if the sage in my front garden was the edible variety as I planted it years ago. Okay, um, so you get a bit of greening going on there, which is cool. Let's have a look. So there it is when it's, that looks like the first pressing and that's the final pressing and you got a, there's a nice green glow to that. So I think the green bit worked. So the spinach will impart a little bit more. Does, did you add any sage? Oh, dried sage, right, perfect, yep. Yeah, and that looks like it's fully, it's ready to go into the cheese fridge now. So yeah, that's nice, nice looking cheese. Why does the other one look so green? It's the same cheese, isn't it? Yeah, maybe. Um, okay, so that's fine. It's a good looking cheese. Hang on, let me just have a look again. Is that the same cheese? Yeah, it's gotta be. Right. anyway, uh, good looking cheese. Right, so the next bit, what am I looking at there? It says, I was doing my daily cheese check and noticed, uh, and check and, ch and turn, I noticed that my farmhouse cheddar had some fluid in the bag. So I took it out and cleaned it, cleaned it and it's currently air drying for a day or two before I reseal it back into the cave. I hope I did the right thing and it will be fine. Yes, you did. And that look, that doesn't look too excessive. Uh, is there another photo? There you go, it's air drying. So that looks fine. Um, just don't air dry it too long and it won't, it shouldn't crack. So just pull it back on the bag and you should be right to go. That, you did the right thing, um, Jan. So yeah, that was all good. Perfect. Um, that's it as far as the gallery goes. But before we go from the gallery, let's just, um, uh, bring up uh, my YouTube channel. Here we go. So whoever wants to find the um, my email address, let me just see. So you go to the channel, Gavin Webber, of course. You go to the About tab here, and you come down here and you go to Details, for Business Inquiries, View Email Address, and you click on that. And it says, are you a robot? Now, I'm not going to click on it because then, yeah, the, the whole, I'll get more spam than I can poke a stick at. Um, yeah, so that's that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's where you find that email address and you can send me all your lovely photos. Thank you both to uh, Jan and Habib for sending through those photos this week. Um, if you want to send some photos through and you want them for a specific day to be shown, whether the Wednesday show at night time, my time, or on the uh, Sunday morning show, my time, Saturday in the Americas, then uh, then put a note in the in the email that you send me through. Otherwise, I will just put them into the next show that is scheduled. Um, and uh, if you um, can't get to that time zone, that that uh, one, then um, uh, then yeah, uh, just uh, watch the replay. I'm lost for words. Hang on, I need a drink of coffee. Let, let's, let's go back to the main screen. Here we go. Merch plug. There we go. Certified curd nerd. You can pick that up at the merch store even. There we go. That's where you get it from. Mm. Nothing like a bit of merch, I reckon. Uh, if you're into that kind of thing. It's a good, co it's a good coffee cup as well. Alrighty. Um... Let me just close those lovely windows and get back to what I was doing. So, um, there are some more questions in the chat, so let's get into those. Um, Claire says, two weeks ago, I asked about a pink tinge parmesan. You suggested tasting, uh, so slightly bitter on cutting, but fine on grating on a risotto. So, back in the backpack for a few months, hope it will be A-OK. -okay. Yeah, it should be clear. I can't see it being any reason why it wouldn't be okay. Uh, George says, Gavin, if the moon was made of cheese, what kind do you think it would have been? Now, what? <laughs> I gotta remember back to um, the first Wallace and Gromit episode where they went to the moon uh, because, you know, Wallace is a bit of a cheese fiend. I think he said it tasted a bit like Wensleydale. I'm not sure. 
But yeah, he, uh, I think I think he said it was Wensleydale. But what I want it to be, ooh, I'd like it to be a nice, uh, gooey washed rind cheese, so orange ish. Now, on on that on the moon, um, you know how they say the moon is made of green cheese, right? It doesn't mean the colour green. Green cheese, back a couple of centuries ago, meant that the cheese was fresh. It was a fresh cheese. That's why, you know, the moon, the, well, the moon's white. <laughs> um, the reflection of the sun, sunlight off of the regolith, the moon regolith is, is a white colour. So fresh cheeses are mainly white. So that's why a green cheese is a fresh cheese. There you go. You didn't know that. Well, you might have, but I'm just helping out. Um, cool Cat says, um, ha ha, I'm a little daft. The story is true, however, and it was fiercely memorable. I ate it 40 years ago at a restaurant with my dad. Uh, imagine blue cheese on toast, but replace toast with steak. Sounds amazing. I love, I love a good steak with uh, blue cheese. Um, Juan says, g'day, or was drooling at the, uh, uh, at the photos in the gallery. Um, uh, cool Cat says Wensleydale. <laughs> ah, you're a man of my own heart. Um, here's a good question. Um, All was right, says um, uh, Gavin, what was your first, the very first cheese you ever made? Well, there's a good story about that. Um, and actually, can I find it to read it to you? Uh... Yeah, let's have a look. Hang on, let me just uh, pull up my book because I can do stuff like that. Uh, where did I store that said manuscript? It's just bear with me, curd nerds. Uh, it's in my 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 publications folder. Keep calm and make cheese. So many versions. Right, there we are. Rightio. So, those who... Oh, can I can I show this? We'll do a show and tell. Um, one second. Right, here we go. Um, Uh, sorry, it's taking a little bit more time. Right, there we go. Oh, you can see that bit. That's not good. Don't look at that bit there. Alrighty. Um, so this is my first book. Uh, Keep Calm and Make Cheese. Uh, you can get it in the merch store or the um, the merch shelf below. And um, if we go to past that bit, to the first bit, where is it? Why I Make Cheese. Here we go. Um all right, so you get a sneak preview of the man preview of the man manuscript. Um, da -da -da -da. Where is it? Uh, okay, I'll start from here. So one such multi multicultural experience introduced me to a milk product other than butter and soap suds. You can read the rest if you buy the book. Um, I was visiting a friend, and his name was George. I didn't put that in there to protect the innocent. Um, whose parents were of Greek origin, and they invited me to stay for lunch. At the meal, they served marinated kalamata olives, fresh flatbed bread, preserved salami, and best of all, homemade Greek yogurt and freshly made feta. Um, the memory is still very, still vividly etched into my neural pathways, and I can still taste the sharpness of the yogurt and the saltiness of the feta. Uh, it was a taste experience that I shall never forget. Um, anyway, so fast forward to February 2009, uh, which was a, mo mo a momentous month. It was a month that I made my very first cheese. But why was it momentous? Well, from that day that I first tasted those Greek dairy products, I had always wondered how they made cheese at home. Most cheeses I knew about were made under hygienic conditions in a factory. This was my chance. Uh, our local community centre was hosting a cheese making course and to cut a long story short, um, I thoroughly enjoyed the five hour course. I made some feta 
and then purchased a cheese making kit afterwards so I could make my very own cheese at home. Finally, my wish came true and I created a delicious feta, not unlike the one I remembered all those years ago. There you go. Uh, since that very first cheese, I've gone on to make many different types of cheese, including just about every cheese on the planet. Anyway, that's the story. It was feta. <laughs> okay, so if you wanted to pick those up, those books, where the heck did I... Where the heck is my stream thing? Uh, I, uh, that's, that's what I'm looking for. It's there somewhere. Okay, um, right, yeah. Hopefully this is, yeah, it's working. I closed the window, I don't know, <laughs> it's still working. Right, so um, there is a shopping thing. Can I get it to work and put it in the chat? Uh, select products um, let's have a look the book and oh, that's the second book we'll put that in there and where's the first book don't let me down here we go uh, save and it's thinking about it and uh, no, that one there we go. And this in the chat box somewhere, if it's doing its thing, it's going to pin where you can get the first book, where I just read that extract from. There you go. So plug in a bit of merch this episode, but that's just, it works. Anyway, uh, okay, so that'll come up in a minute. Um, uh, Chris says, on the phone, there's no option to see the email address. That is unfortunate. Uh, you will have to find a browser next time you visit a computer now this merch thing's not working anyway uh, that's a shame too um, uh, Monchi bun and lovely to see you it says hi again when aiming for a target temperature what is an acceptable range to miss by um, I would say uh, plus or minus two degrees is the best I mean, remember that Starter cultures have a very good range of temperatures that they're tolerant of. However, they do have about a plus or minus two degree window where they thrive, okay? So they can tolerate temperatures that are quite wide range, but they thrive within a specific temperature window. Now with most mesophiles or mesophilic cultures, it's about 32 to 34 degrees Celsius. That's when they absolutely thrive. And you'll see most cheese making recipes are indeed uh, around that temperature. Now, thermophilics on the other hand, uh, have a narrow range of about 46 to 48 degrees Celsius where they thrive. Um, they do have a large temperature range when they activate. I think it's from about 38 degrees Celsius all the way up to about 54 degrees Celsius, they can tolerate those temperatures, no problems at all. But they thrive between 46 and 48. So when you're aiming for a target temperature, plus or minus two degrees, and you're in the zone for the those lactic bacteria to thrive and start eating as much lactose as they possibly can. So um, it doesn't look like the shopping thing's working. It's not pinning to the not pinning um, uh, maybe this is why uh, my first book right is it gonna work this time maybe all right I'll let it figure itself out um, there you go thanks Mochi Bun for that question and uh, Claire says I've been using blue plastic commercial cheese cloths is there a reason to switch to cotton fibre uh, it is hard to keep the cheese from crease marks. Uh, is the crease an infection danger point? Uh, not so much. Um, the, the plastic blue commercial cheese cloths work fine. Um, they are single use only though, they're supposed to be. Um, so the reason I use the cotton fibre loose weave cheese cloths and tight weave cheese cloths is because they're reusable. Uh, you know, I've had the same cheesecloth uh, for 
I'll probably change them out every two years, roughly. Once they get a stain on them from something, whether it be a piece of fruit or something like that, or or what have you, uh, then I will use the loose weave cheese cloths for cloth banding. If we're going to cloth band a cheddar, uh, I'll use those with a bit of lard, and that works fine. Or otherwise, just throw them in the compost bin, and they just um, they break down. Uh, the blue plastic ones don't break down for thousands of years. So, and like I said, it's single use. So I do use the fiber cloths, and they work perfectly for me. I don't have any problems whatsoever. Okay, I uh, hope that answers your question, Claire. Um, now, because I haven't seen it go off today, I do like the curd nerd light. There you go. Um, <laughs> just, just because when you do a super chat, it does make the light go automatically. It's automatic. It's all good. All right, now we've got some jokes because we can. What time is it? Oh, gee, not much time. We've got eight minutes to the end of the show. Right, let's... Is it World Pirate Day today? No, that was last month. Uh, what's a pirate's favourite cheese? Thank you, Pillow Tree, for subscribing to the channel. Um, what's a pirate's favourite cheese? Cheddar. Cheddar. <laughs> that is a good joke. That's a dad joke, if I ever saw one. Rightio. Um, and speaking of dads, the very last thing my dad said to me before I left home... You need one of those things that can shred cheese with. That was some great advice. Get it? Oh, I didn't do the rim shot. There you go. Now that is a dad joke. <laughs> All righty. Um, what did the man say when he got lost in a cheese factory? Excuse me, sir. Can you show me the way? <laughs> oh, goodness me. There. Right. In front of my head. There we go. Or can you show me the way to San Jose? Maybe. I don't know. Um, that, right. That was silly. Um, a friend of mine. Sorry. My, I'll start again. Hang on, I need another cuppa. Mm. There we go. Uh, my friends stole cheese from my cheese collection. How dare he? Oh, I don't know if that's worthy. That'll do. That's a good one. Um, uh, I saw a great offer on cheese today. It was buy one, get one brie. Oh. Well, they're just getting worse, I'm sure. Um, one more, one more. Um, I have an addiction to cheddar cheese, but it's only mild. <sighs> oh, and there's one more on the back. Uh, what kind of cheese goes around a castle? Mozzarella. Get it? The moat. Mozzarella. <laughs> oh, goodness me. That's the jokes for today. Right, I'm sure there is another, uh, another, <laughs> another question. Cool Cat says, I need some cheese moulds and some blue cheese culture. I'm making that blue cheese you call Petite Blue this month. This will be my first cheese. Excellent. So the size cheese moulds you'll need for the Petite Blue... Uh, 10 centimetres across. Uh, so they're known as camembert moulds or camembert blue cheese moulds. Um, that's what I sell them as. You can get camembert hoops, which are ones without the bottom. Uh, so they're just see-through. So, um, so that's the mould size you'll need. Now, the mould that I used specifically with those cheeses was the Mad Millie uh, Blue Mould Culture Blend 5-pack. Um, so... That's the that's the culture that I used. Um, you can use it. You can use um, a aromatic mesophilic and a blue mold powder and combine them. But I just used a sachet, so it was one sachet for the four liters of milk. And Bob's your uncle, and they turned out fantastic. It was a beautiful cheese. Um, but I hope that all works out. I hope, I hope it all um, turns out fine. 
It should do. Um, Chubba Bubba says, you are the breeze knees. Ah, oh, like that. Hang on, that's worthy of this. Nice one. Liked it. Um, uh, <laughs> Apollo Cheddar. I knew it. Yeah, that's just a pirate thing. Um, always right, says Gavin Webber, the, uh, uh, the original cheese whiz. That stuff, isn't that that squirty stuff you buy in a can? And you go, and the cheese and it's yellow. I'm not a processed cheese. I'm the real deal, man. Yeah. Okay. Um, I love it. Um, eat them well, read out loud. <laughs> Gouda, do it through. Right. That, they're getting worse. Um, okay. Um, Claire says, hope everybody has a great day. I need to go back to work. Thanks, Gavin Kim. Thank you very much, Claire. Appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, have a fantastic day. What time is it? Right, so we've got three minutes to go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's me done for the evening. Uh, thanks to everybody. For those who want to learn how to make cheese, don't forget you can go to the Kernerd Academy. Go to little, uh, courses.littlegreenworkshops.com.au and that you can see the beginner's cheese making course where you can, um, uh, you can learn to make nine different cheeses. Uh, there's video instructions, there's a whole structured course. So it's not like the channel, which is a bit random. There's a structured course where you go through the basics of cheese making uh, initially first, and then you get to easy recipes all the way to hard recipes. Um, and there's even a copy of my first book thrown in for free in the course, um, so which you can download in the courseware. So, um, yeah, so that, that's that. If you want to pick up supplies, pop over to littlegreenworkshops.com.au uh, and go to the cheese making section. There's lots of other sections, of course, because uh, Kim and I run it together. And we have soap, candles, bath bomb stuff, bath and body and... Obviously, lots of cheese stuff. You know, we got lots of kits there behind me and supplies and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, uh, if you want to pick up the merch, T-shirts, cups, iPhone holders, you name it, they're there. Uh, I think you uh, no no mouse pads uh, yet, but they're coming. Um, yeah, you just go to merch. It's uh, cheesemantvcreator.creator-spring.com. I've got to come up with a better URL on that. Anyway. Curd nerds, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thanks for watching today. And the next show will be on Sunday, my time. Um, and I hope to see you then. And in between, I'm hoping to produce some cheese videos. Uh, seem to be focusing more on live, but that's because I haven't been well. I'm starting to mend now, so that's good. All right, see you later, curd nerds. And I will see you next time. Bye.